Right, we're back again. Boys from Fury MMA. Um, hot off of Road to Fury. Um, Martin Island here with Dan, the gentleman. Yo, how Dan. are everyone doing? Yeah, good man. You know, we're back in the studio again. You know, the UK MMA scene. Uh, this weekend was hot, you know, it was, was, it was amazing. You had, obviously, you had Cage Warriors, Bama, and of course, Osha, Fury MMA, some top, top fights. Dan, uh, sorry, let me just cut you right there, man. Uh, before we even get any further into the show, we'd just like to thank some of our sponsors. Uh, the Daily Sport, MMA Uncaged, we've got Spearmint Rhino, the Gentleman's Club, and extra fit. These are some of the guys, man. They really pulled it out for out of the bag for us on the night, you know. Listen, right supporting. now with extra fit as well. I believe all the Fury MMA yeah, fans, just MMA fans, twenty percent off their product, product. So if you contact them or go through their Facebook or website, I'm sure they'll be able to sort you something out, and they are great. As I well. must say, if you are gonna go with extra fit, you got to get the choco cocoa protein, man. That is delicious, <laughs> man. I knew you, I knew you would love that one, man. Um, listen. You know, we want to talk about this weekend. This podcast is about the show that happened, yeah, Road to course. Fury. We had some great fights. But, you know, without further ado, I think one of the guys we want to bring on is definitely my man, Chris Hoekstra, who is the, uh, um, the commentator on the show. And you might have seen him announce as well, who commentates with Goff Harriman. Chris, are you on the line? You bet, buddy. How's it going, Dan? Uh, it's all good, buddy. I'm here with mine. How's it going, Chris? I must say, Chris, you were looking... Dapper on the night, man. I love the suit. I love the swag bar. It was it was totally on point, man. I'm a little bit jealous myself personally. I think the next show I'll definitely have to um up my uh my, my dress wear just a little bit. Oh man, you guys are far too kind. It was just an absolutely outstanding show. It was a real privilege to be there and just a ton of great fights all night. Listen, Chris, talking about fights, you know, uh, we, we were just going through the list and this, I mean, for me personally, all the fights were great, you know, the, the, the guys, you know, we had lots of first-timers on there, I mean, one of the guys that's, uh, that stuck out and I'm sure you want to talk about is Christoph, you know, from Lions Pride. Yeah, a- absolutely, this, this young man comes from one of the top gyms in South of London, Lions Pride. Um, I've been there before, I've trained with them, I've been there for seminars, and this young man, I tell you what, he ate a couple of outside leg kicks in the first maybe 15, 20 seconds, but he pressed the action from there, and uh, really outstanding handwork from him, up and downstairs, you'll see, I'm sure, the fight on YouTube, go and check it out, Um, brilliant talent coming out of the Lions Pride Gym there. Talking of talent, yeah, Craig Cohen versus Andrew Prescott. Now, a lot of people don't know this, but um, Craig, he's pretty much stopped everybody I've seen on Fury, hasn't he? Yes, he he's has. come up against an unknown Andrew Prescott, and the man is 55 years old. Was you aware of this? Uh, you know what? I, I was not. I met some of the fans out in the parking lot before. He had quite a big following. I believe it's a Spanish guy, and he's a I mean, yeah, they they were they lapped that one up, and I think we might be possibly looking at a rematch if we get the gentleman to get out his match. Poss- possibly, you know, I spoke to Andrew. He wants the rematch, and you know, I think Craig was was very. He was great that he had a he had a fight on his hands. You yeah. know, like you said, he passed previous three shows that he's fought, and he's managed to stop everyone in the first round. You know, it's great. Talking about stoppages, you know, we, uh, if you remember correctly, Chris, while you was commenting, I know you, you was one of your fights with the bloodiest fights that we saw anyway, was Frankie Hart versus Luke Suarez. And we know, obviously, I've looked back on the footage and I've investigated this. It looks like that Luke cut his head on the takedown on the cage, you know. So we, we are looking to make this as a no contest. I've investigated this. Obviously, the injury happened of no fault of his own. Um, Luke's happy to have a rematch. Frankie's happy to have a rematch. I mean, from that first round that you saw, this fight, it, it could be a, another potential great fight, obviously, to see it happen again. Yeah. It was such a We thought originally it might have been a kick. Okay. Hello, Chris? Martin, I think we might have lost Chris, man. We tried to get him back online. You know, but like you know, like he was saying, it, it, it could have it could have been it could have been uh, from a kick, like he was saying, you know. Yeah. But 
Frankie, he'll be back again. They were both happy. He wanted to continue. I need to make that clear that he wanted to continue. It was due to the doctor's advice. And, you know, once it comes to the doctor's advice, it has to, you know, and the yeah. referee does it. You know, it, 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 fight of safety is paramount, yeah. you know. Talking about talking points of the show, me personally, the MMA clinic. I mean, Dan... Where did you find these guys from? Yeah. Seven and O <laughs> on the night. I was absolutely taken away by the performances of these guys. You know what, Paul Paul Hines, the head coach at MMA, MMA Clinic. You know they they are fantastic. You know he he put the guys forward. You know you had Sohar Ajban. Ugh. Yeah. You know, the kid, the kid, the kid is 16 years old, and 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 you see the footage again against Jason Collins. He wrapped him up in that guillot. Um, I sorry, in that triangle choke like there's no him tomorrow. Into a pretzel. I mean, I, I, saw, <laughs> I mean, I saw him. And I was just like, really? I mean, he's this kid's really gonna fight. He was so impressive. He was a you know massive talking point. Another talking point: submission of the night. Who would you say the submission of the night goes to? You know, the submission of the night would again. It was an amateur fight, and people were like, why have you put an amateur fight on the main bill? You know, we had Elliot Bradford, Black Stars, you gym. know, from Black Stars Gym. Obviously, his, his coach Kofi Black will be will be fine on the show very very soon, possibly for the title against Adam Ridian. You know, credit to these guys. It was Adam's first MMA fight in the cage, and same with Elliot. They both put it on the line. Line, you know, a bit of nerves being on the main half of the card that could always, you know, have a play into it. But the armbar that he pulled out, you know, I'm not taking any way, anything, anything away from Adam, but Elliot put that on like snap, and I had to jump in there and obviously fight to safety and, and stop the fight. Talking of impressive gyms, Nick Manick from DFC, he went against you know, Andre. Thalic of course, and, oh on, my God, on Andre Thalic, on Andre Thalic, you know he stepped in last minute. You know he 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 done. You know he done very very good. And Nick Manick, it was his first MMA fight. You know he, he, he they both put it on the line. Andre oh, turned man. up last minute. He's a boxer. Don't forget, Andre Thalic is a boxer. Yes. He has trained MMA, but mate, can, the can I just say yeah. a front kick in the face I, when the guy was right. In his face, exactly. like, it was incredible. Sorry, man. I think we got Chris back on the line. Chris, Chris can you hear us? You bet, buddy. Listen, right here. I don't know what happened. Uh, that's okay. We, we, we had a problem with the Lions. Listen, we, we were just talking about Nick Manick and Andre Thalic, and I know that was personally one of your favorite fights of the night. Oh, it was sick, man. I mean, I've seen Andre Thalic box before in the promotion, yeah. and uh, he, he really does know how to press the action, and he's an aggressive fighter to begin with. Yeah. So when Thalic makes fights, Exactly, exactly that. Listen, we've got two more fights that I want to talk about, which is one of those co-main event: Jake McCarthy versus Lucas Bianias. Oh. You know, Lucas obviously comes from the you know famous MMA clinic, and Jake McCarthy from NWA. What was your thoughts on that fight? How did you see it going? And obviously, the way it ended, did that surprise you, Chris? It's difficult. I mean, I, I've watched McCarthy for a while now. Um, a really talented fighter takes his training very seriously, and if you watch the You know what, these, these guys, I mean, for me, the winner of these guys, you know, in the future will be looking at fighting for the title. Definitely. Um, it, it, it was a fantastic, you know, fight between, especially, like I said, the MMA clinic, the, I think on the night they went 5-0. Was it 5-0, you know? no, not 7 so, no. so, I don't know, it was a bit of pressure on Lucas to, you know, go, you know, my rest of my teammates have won, I need to win. He put that guillotine yeah. on tight. Beautiful, it know? was beautiful. For sure. Chris. I mean, it's funny you should say that I was training that tonight. So, I just, just moved from jiu-jitsu, so it's, uh, as my coach says, the neck is always there. It's yes. always there. Exactly. Chris, let's talk about the main event. 9-0, and oh, Charlie Boy Howard versus the dangerous Reiko the Lion Levici. Give us your thoughts on this spectacular main event. It was outstanding. I mean, 
mean, we'd had, obviously, incredible displays of heart all night long. We'd had, obviously, submissions, finishes with the DKO. But what we didn't have was a fighter drop two rounds. Really. I mean, realistically, a lot of people, and there was nearly 100 fans for Charlie Boy there. Yes. Yeah. If you could hear it. There was a lot of drama in the atmosphere moving into the second round. Levici really, in my opinion, uh, played the game plan quite well for the first, say, round and a half. And then, obviously, it was just that moment, and I believe you'll find when you watch the commentary, we called it pretty good, that he was in dangerous territory. Charlie Howard has a nasty guard. And whereas, obviously, throughout the fight, Rico was able to posture and sort of uh, play a, an anti-guard game, it was just those couple of seconds, those eeny weeny winky teensy little mistakes, which Charlie capitalized on I, with what's my favorite submission, the armbar. So of course. Just incredible. That that yeah. went on that went on so quick, you know. Even the same thing as as I was refereeing the fight, I could hear Ray Coast Corner saying, "Posture up, watch your arms." But you know, you know, like they say, sometimes you can't hear your corner. We, you know, like you said, the atmosphere was buzzing, it was loud, you know. And Charlie Boy capitalized on that. But I want to give credit to Rayco. He took that fight as a late yeah. step in of two of two weeks' notice. He's asked me for the rematch, but you know that's something I've got to talk about with Charlie's manager. Personally, I think Rayco needs to get back on his winning ways again. Another title contention, but that's something else we'll, we'll say. We'll say Chris, for the future. Chris, I've got a question for you. All right? Yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. I would like to know. I mean, considering you've been to shows in the US, Canada, and throughout Europe, how do you think the UK MS, MMA scene is coming along as it stands right now? Wow, that's a great question. I mean, how is it? Progressing worldwide might even be a, a better comparison. Um, as we see, I, I really think, you know, with other promotions in other countries, bringing the fights to local communities, obviously, Fury in London, maybe Fury going elsewhere soon, um, we're seeing what has been the grassroots embracement of martial arts. People see MMA as martial arts. What happens when you get a judo guy who learns how to strike and goes in? What happens when you get a guy who's, who's got jiu-jitsu tattooed on his forearm like Charlie Boy and put him in? We are thing. starting to see on all of these wonderful stages, of which Fury is a very good example, just how truly exciting and, in, in my opinion, popular and almost uh, to, to the point to become where in the future it will be mainstream and MMA can be. And it's just... Wonderful. I'm sure you two gentlemen will agree to be along for that ride. Listen, oh, we, we, we appreciate you being along the ride. Chris, oh, yeah. just for the fans, you know, obviously want to know a little bit more about you. Obviously, you are you are a main commentator, and I know you do the comparing for us as well. You know, I, I know you from the days when you used to come down as a fan. I know you from a friend of a friend who used to come, and you used to come down and watch the shows. Just tell them a little yeah. bit about how you got into commentary, not just with, with Fury MMA, but just in general and, and what makes it so exciting about commentating fights and great fights like this as well. Yeah, I mean, first and foremost, I am a fan. I think I'd be at these events no matter what, whether I'm in the stands, whether I'm helping other guys train or, or, or other things like this. For me, it's, it's, I think in my own life, just been incredibly rewarding to involve myself in learning, in education. Exactly. And I think, you know, obviously being a history teacher on my other side of uh, work, uh, commentary and the educational aspects of being able to pull somebody into the fight, yeah, see and understand it as it happens, and hopefully walk away with a better understanding of what happened that makes commentary so exciting. So I think, you know, back when I started training karate and Muay Thai, and then I fell in love uh, having wrestled throughout high school um, with the ground game, uh, catch wrestling, judo, jiu-jitsu, a little bit of judo. I think I just... Man, you're the love. guru. You're the guru of MMA. No wonder you're such a good commentator. <laughs> <laughs> Understanding really everything that occupies all of these different spheres, and then what happens when they mix, and that's what makes mixed martial arts what it is for me. Uh, I just hope to be able to share that with uh, uh, more and more every day. Chris, thank you very much for that. Um, must say, as I said before, I'll be getting the suit. Send us an email. Let us let me know where you get the suits from, man. <laughs> 
I appreciate that, Chris. Chris, listen, we'll have, we'll have you. Obviously, we'll be hearing from you in the future shows as well. But really appreciate you. And uh, we'll speak to you soon, buddy. Absolutely. You guys have a great evening. Thank you very much. Take, Take care. care. Well, wow, Bye. Martin. You know, that, you know, Chris obviously has got a great insight, wow. as you heard. You know, he's, he's a very experienced guy. He, he, he knows his stuff. And, he's you know, a pool of information, man. He's incredible. <coughs> you know, I'm glad he's part of the, uh, on the, on the Fury MMA team, especially the production team. Yeah. He, he's, he's knowledgeable. Him and Garth. You know, Very, Garth, obviously, yeah. you've seen him referee on the show. You know, he's going into his commentary. They, they are both, both very knowledgeable and, and, and know what they are talking about. Um, listen, just before we wrap it up, you know, I can't, you know, first of all, personally, I want to thank Everyone who was involved in Fury, from the fighters, from the staff, from the gyms, from people who, even the club, it was at Studio 338 helping us out. Me personally, the stars behind the stars, the photographers. Exactly, yeah, of course, your, your production crew. And yeah, definitely. Go and check out our videos on our uh, Fury YouTube page. And of course, the, the one, weatherman, oh, the weatherman, Dean you know, McLennan. Okay. He, did, he didn't like, want us to say yeah. that. But, you know, one day you guys will see him on yeah, camera. Yeah, we'll, we'll bring him forward at some point. Very, very, very soon. Very, very soon. All right, going on to next week's show, we will be having Frankie Hart and Luke Suarez on here talking about the, the decision that I've made to make it a no contest and also their rematch coming up. And... From and New Wave Academy, I believe. Christian Ivaldi. Oh, 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 oh. Big fan of Christian Ivaldi. And, and possibly, possibly, Paul Hines for nice the MMA clinic. clinic. We'll be talking about them. Guys, if there's any questions that you'd like us to bring up or any topics you'd like us to talk about, feel free to email us on dan at fury-mma.co.uk or martin at fury-mma. He didn't even get that. Martin at fury-mma.co.uk <laughs> <laughs> Guys, till next week. Cool boy era. Take it easy. As Mr. Doran would say. Be there or, or be, be octagon. Peace. Take care.